move over to our last 13-minute segment of panel questioning. And uh, Mayor Nutter, have at it. Thank you. <laughs> Hardly. Um, good evening, and thank you, thank you, Jeff. Um, just a, a couple, I guess what I call traditional interview questions. Um, where'd you grow up? Well, I was born in the Northeast on Sharon Lane off the of Welsh Road. And when I got a little over, we, older, we moved to the other side of Pine Road uh, in Huntington Valley. And where'd you go to high school and college and what was your major? Went to, I went to high school at Abington, went to college at Babson. I graduated with a degree in entrepreneurial studies. And I th I've heard you talk about the business, but I know there was at least a, either a commercial or an ad that talked about your dad and your grandfather and the grocery business and that you did some work with them. Did you take over that business or start your own or they went out of business or what's the history there? I don't know what the story is with my family, but no legacy business so far. It's a fourth, I'm a fourth generation grocer. Every generation sold their business. The next generation uh, continued in the trade. When I was eight years old, I was living in the Northeast. My dad had a store in West Philly and um, uh, two of his customers were your parents. So we go back in that regard. Well, I'm not so sure about that. We should, <laughs> we should probably not discuss that here because okay. they didn't live anywhere near your store, but it's fine. <laughs> you want to move on. Okay. Um, and, and I worked in that store. That's where I learned the grocery business. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of your business, let's talk about government, tax incentives, um, and the elements that went into some of the expansive growth. You have how many stores? 12 stores. And what was the nature of either tax breaks or tax incentives that led to the growth of your business? So um, my first stores were suburbanish type stores. The first store was in Roxborough, no incentives. Uh, probably second, third, fourth, no incentives. Um, there was a movement to talk about food deserts and no grocery stores wanted to go in it. Um, and there was a meeting at United Way, and they presented uh, the problem that if you don't have a grocery store and you get your food at a gas station, that there's a horrible health outcome, and people would lose 20 years of their life. And I was there with all the grocers in the state, and every one of them said, no, nah, I'm not doing that. And I was there with Dwight Evans, and, and uh, we were talking about how could we do this. And uh, I said, you know, this is a business model problem. Um, the, the stores lose money. It's mechanical in nature, and maybe we can monkey around with different things to try to get it to work. Well, I'm going to get I don't, to it. I don't, I don't want to go through all that history. Okay. Just you want a more expedited version? Yeah. What all were right. the incentives and how much? All right. So um, the very first store we used economic incentives was Island Avenue in Southwest Philly. And the primary incentive we used was a new market tax credit the first time it was done in the country. That's a federal incentive. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, So you've not served in government, so I'm, I'm interested to know who's advising you about government since you've never served in the government? Where do you get your advice? So the first thing I did two years ago, I, I uh, hired a former mayor, John Street, and um, he spent about nine months with me. Um, he would come regularly and present different aspects of government. And I also hired a PhD from Columbia who also came. So I heard two different sides of it. When I was done each session, I would go and talk to a department head or a union to find out what their take was it. And I built, I built over a period of a year um, an understanding of each aspect of our government from that, those resources. From what? From those resources. Resources. Didn't hear you. How many times have you read the Home Rule Charter? Um, both John Street um, and, and this PhD went through it with me, the Home Rule Charter. And um, I also talked to Wilson Good, who also went through it with me. And when you say went through it with you, what does that mean? I'm, I'm talking about... Yeah, they told me, like, told this you is what you need to... Pieces. I'm yeah. asking, how many times have you read the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter? I never read it, but all three of them went through it with me. They said, this is what you need to know. Okay. What's the most important position uh, that you'll hire in if you're the next mayor? I think chief of staff and managing director, two most important. Why? 
because from an operating standpoint, that's how I'm going to operate. I'm going to lead those two people. They're going to manage all the people. What are you going to be doing? Manage them. You're going to manage them. And manage them and really, um, th this is a more than 50% external job. It's communicating with the citizens. It's, it's communicating with council, with the unions. Um, it's getting people to where you need them to get, to explain things and lead them, lead them to where we're going. And uh, if you get too in the weeds, you won't be able to have enough time with the people. The people being the public employees or the citizens? The citizens, the unions, the employees. I mean, it's a cheerleader job. It's a visionary job. Yeah, it's a little it's, more than that. Excuse me? It's a little more than that. That's a big component of it. But it's a little more than just cheerleading. Have you ever been stopped by the police? No. Ever? Oh, ever? Yeah. Uh, once in college, I was stopped because um, I got a new uh, car. And you can have temporary plates in Pennsylvania, but not in Massachusetts. So I was stopped there. In Massachusetts? Yeah, in Massachusetts. Yeah, where I went to school. Got it. OK. Um, what's the sinking fund? Sinking fund is where you put money away for a problem you might have in the future. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's the rainy day fund. Sinking fund is for debt service. What's the administrative board do? The administrative board, uh, which is, PI is PICA, what you're talking about? No. PICA is PICA. Okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Administrative board is the mayor, the managing director, and the finance director, and they take up, in many instances, uh, personnel-related issues, uh, as well as um, if we're going to change classifications for public employees. So all of those matters uh, come through uh, the administrative board, those, those three officers. You had mentioned, and I, and I know, I mean, we all want our services. Um, the issue about picking up the trash. Um, so my trash day is Monday in Winfield. It's been the same since 1977 when I moved there. Um, I'd say over the years, I mean, pretty significant on-time pickup. In the last few years, and certainly because of the pandemic, there has been, there have been from time to time issues with that. But I just, I feel compelled as a former public employee you know, in 2020, during the recession, and there were significant challenges in sanitation. But a lot of that had to do with the fact that many of our sanitation workers were getting sick because they're frontline workers. It's really hard to do that job if you don't have the people. And so I just want to be, I just want to express concern about putting that on the workers in the way that it is characterized. And it's also really hard, and it's also really hard when the city's losing money because we told everyone to go home in 2020 and 2021 when we had stay-at-home orders and the city was losing money. It's really hard to hire people if you don't have any money. And they still have to go through the process. So uh, just, just a cautionary well, note. Is that a question or, or, or you're it's a making cautionary a note. You can respond to it. I mean, yeah, because I want to you respond talk to about it. it all the time. First of all, let, let me say that the sanitation workers work uh, or are members of DC 33 who endorsed, yep. who endorsed me. I know that. Um, I never said the workers were at fault. I think leadership is at fault. I understand. Well, and, then say that. And, le and le because when you have 40% more tons of trash, you need more workers and you need to hire. And no one even tried to hire people. One. I don't know. Second thing is, my workers were in mass a month or two before the sanitation workers. That's a leadership problem. Mm -hmm. They should have been in mass. They wouldn't have got sick. I understand it. I actually bought some. I'm only suggesting that in the public commentary, if we're continually talking about we need to pick up the trash, pick up the trash, sometimes they can't pick up all the trash out there because they didn't have enough people, at least at the beginning. The leadership issue, you can take that up. That's what campaigns are for. Um, it's been reported that you have indicated a concern about some 
quote unquote, I'll use my language, not yours, bad legislation passed by city council. Um, what are some of those examples? So let, let's start out with, um, and I don't want to pick on the person who passed the legislation because that's not appropriate for here, but I think we overcorrected on criminal justice reform in some cases. Like for example, in, in the uh, bill, that police officers aren't, aren't allowed to stop uh, citizens that don't have a registered vehicle, and if it's not registered, it probably doesn't have insurance. This is the legislation by Councilman Isaiah Thomas? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not against most of the things in the bill, but I have a problem with handcuffing the police from stopping unregistered vehicles that also probably are unlicensed, I mean, uh, no insurance. And, you know, I'm just concerned about why would the person have a vehicle that's not registered and has no insurance? And is that smart to let unregistered vehicles driving around our streets with no checks and balances on that? That's an example. I, I don't, that part of the bill, I'd like some of the other parts of the bill, but I don't like that part of the bill. Yeah. What other piece of legislation? So um, Helen Gim passed a bill with unpredictive um, scheduling. And I think there are certain parts of the bill I agree with. I've lived with those things in my own union contracts. I think people need advanced scheduling. But, you know, in a lot of cases, I think it's very insensitive to the employees. They have penalties. If you have to call someone in because someone else called out, you're penalizing the employee. Now, our problem here and the reason we have excessive poverty is companies don't want to come here. And did anyone think about, is this another way we've made this an unattractive place to come and open your business? Did anyone think about that? Where was that side of the discussion? I don't know. I wasn't down there that time. Um, last question, because I'm up on a minute. What are you going to do on the first day in office if you're elected? One thing I really admire that um, Mayor Street did, he picked up abandoned cars. Since the time he left, we have all the abandoned cars back again, over 40,000 abandoned cars. And, you know, there's just not enough parking. And I don't think it will cost us a lot of money to pick it up because the cars have a value if you melt them down. This I'd like to pick up... I'd on like the to, first day... We're I'd like to sign cars. an executive order to tell the police to notify all the abandoned cars, remove them, or we're taking them and melting them down. We'll use the money from that to pay for the cost of it. It would be a big step forward. That's the whole day? No. <laughs> <laughs> that only takes a couple minutes. Um, I also think that um, we have not been open to help from the philanthropic community um, and I do believe that um, we could show the citizens some great progress on things by having people step up and make commitments, both get, uh, drawing new businesses to our city and also getting philanthropic support for some of our initiatives. And I think the first day, the first week, we could have some exciting announcements to show some real progress. Okay, thanks. <laughs>